I'd like to explain how you do counting in programming. Generally, you're not counting a number of things. You're counting how many times to do something. And if you want to do something 10 times, you use what's called a for loop. In Alice, it calls it a count. So it's a standard for loop. And you'll actually see the code in Alice. When Alice does this, it will say, it will set a integer n equals, and it will usually either have a number or you can have a variable. But really, it's going to be the um, number of times to process. And that would that's an example of a variable. This could be set to 10, 20, whatever. We're going to say that we're actually getting that number from the user and setting it to 10. I'm sort of using pseudocode here, not really any true programming language. Then the for loop would be for int, which is an integer, i. We're just calling the current number that we're on, i, i actually represents integer, equals zero. So what we've just done, that's a complete programming statement initialing the letter i as a variable to the number zero. The next step is to check if i is less than n, which is our integer that we just declared in the line of pseudocode above this. I did put integer spelled out the first time, int from here forward and in most programming languages will represent an integer. And that's the end of a line. It's going to check and see is i less than n. If i is less than n, it's going to execute whatever code follows. And then the last part of the for statement is i plus plus. Anytime you see plus plus in an, a programming statement, what that does this is the same, this is an, those who represent comments, this is the same as i equals i plus 1. That's the same as i plus plus. So what we're doing is we're just incrementing, we're adding 1 to i. So our next line of code and it would typically be between curly brackets. It's not a line, our next block of code between the curly brackets will execute as many times as it's indicated by n. So let's say that we actually want to perform a countdown on screen. In Alice, we'd have somebody say something. If you were using C++, you'd do a C out. If you're using Java, you'd do a print line. We're just going to use pseudocode here to, rep to replicate what's going on. So if we want something to print a count down, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, we'd actually have to have another number in here. And we would probably declare it up here before you got into your program. Ver, that's a generic variable, but let's be more specific, int because it's an integer, equals int my count, that's my variable name, equals 10, because we're going to count down from 10. So we have an integer, we've named it my count, we've set the value of my count equal to 10. So in our code, we are going to display, we're going to, um, and again, this is just pseudocode. We're going to say display and we will just display that number on the screen. So it'll be my count and then we're going to have my count equal my count minus 1. And again, this would be the same if we wanted to. We could just do my count minus minus 
that is 2 minus sine squared. And that would show you, that would do exactly the same thing. Now let's show you what would happen if we were actually running this code. Let's walk through it a bit. I'm going to move the screen over a little bit. Let's see. Okay, the first time, let's just put in the numbers right here. The first time we go through this, let's just say what the variables are. Now the integer n will never change because you don't see us changing that anywhere here. So the first time through, my count is equal to 10 and i is equal to 0. So we're going to go through this. For int i equals 0, yes, we just initialized that, is i less than n? Is 0 less than 10? Yes, it is. i plus plus. All right, so we're going to go through this, display my count. So we display 10 on screen. My count equals my count minus 1. So my count is now equal to 9. At this point, we're hitting the i plus plus, and int i equals 1 and 10 is displayed on screen. The next time through, i is now 1. Is 1 still less than 10? Yes, so we're going to do this again. 9 will display on screen. We subtract 1 from my count. It becomes 8. It completes the loop. We go back in, and we have to finish our loop statement here of i++, plus plus. so that becomes 2. That's our second time through the loop. Is 2 still less than 10? Yes, it is. So we display it, we subtract, we add 1 to i, it becomes 3, and we go through the loop again. So 3 is still less than n, so it displays 7 on screen. We subtract 1, my count becomes 6. We go to i++, plus plus, i becomes 4. 4 is still less than n, we do it again. 6 displays on screen, we subtract 1. This value becomes 5, we add 1 here, this becomes 5, we check again. Is 5 less than 10? Yes, it is. We display 5 on screen, we subtract 1, it becomes 4, we increment i, i becomes 6, we go check it again. Is 6 less than 10? Yep, so we go through it again. So this will become 3, this will become 7, this will become 2, this will become 8, this will become 1, this will become 9, this will become 0, and this will become 10. Is 10 less than 10? No, 10 is equal to 10. That ends the condition for the loop. We jump out of this and do whatever is next. So once i is equal to 10, the loop stops. We've gone through it 10 times. We actually counted 0 through 9 because on the 10th time we stop, and you always start counting with 0 in programming. So if you want to do something a specific number of times, it's done using a for loop. In Alice, that's a count.